On today's episode of the podcast, I'll be catching you up on what I've been up to over the last week, as well as introducing you to a new friend I would like to call Lenita. So if you're up for a little high fiber fodder, grab a cup of something cozy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I'm coming to you today from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small city outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the Southwest United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our sons, Ronan and Angus, our dog, Pepper, and our cat, Oscar. Thank you so much for stopping by the podcast. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for coming back. It's been a week. Usually I see you every Wednesday and Sunday, but it's been ever since last Sunday, since I have seen you and it is so nice to be back. And if you are a new viewer or subscriber taking a chance on this podcast, welcome. It is always so nice to meet new folks here. So if you have not done it yet, and even if you are a returning viewer and subscriber, please introduce yourself down in the comments below. Let us know what your name is. If you don't mind, tell us where you're coming from. You don't need to be specific and welcome to this corner of the interwebs. Okay, I have some fun stuff I wanna share with you guys today. I, um, some new things I would like to share with you. Some little bits and bobs about what I've been up to over the course of the last week. I'll give you a brief rundown of my progress on some of my projects, though that progress is pretty limited. And then we're gonna get right into this new thing that I um, have gotten myself into, which might be apparent as I sit here right now. And I'm really excited to do that. But before I get into any of that, I do wanna cover a few little uh, administrative, administra administrative details, administrivia, administrata, administrative stuff because we have a knit along coming to the channel and to the Instagrams um, here at Wool Needles Hands. And that is the, uh, what is it? I know my hashtag. Hashtag break the curse knit along or break the curse K-A-L. This is a knit along that we are running here on the channel and over on Wool Needles Hands on Instagram where we are knitting a sweater for our male significant other or some special man in our life. Now, I'm pretty, you know, when it comes to knit alongs and things like that, I'm easy. Like just, I want you to join in if you have reason to knit the type of thing that we're knitting. Whether or not you're, you know, you have a significant other or not, it doesn't matter. The purpose of this knit along though, is that we are knitting sweaters for guys. Okay. Whether, you know, men, guys, dudes, whatever you want to call them, we're knitting sweaters for the male form. That's what we're doing in this knit along. If you would like to know more about this knit along, if you would like to get involved, check the community tab here on YouTube. I posted about it and then head over to Instagram. You're going to want to find this photo and that's going to tell you everything about the knit along. If you want to know why I'm referring to or calling it break the curse. You can kind of Google this, I guess, but there's this whole thing about how if you're in a relationship with somebody and you begin to knit a sweater for them, um, you're cursed to have the relationship end on you before you complete the project. <laughs> It's so silly. Okay, the next order of business that I wanted to mention is that Fiber for the People, my hand-dyed yarn business, is having a shop update this Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The collection I'm bringing to the shop is inspired by moody contrasts, and I am also bringing back the beloved colorway Endor, so you definitely don't wanna miss it. You wanna be to the shop a little bit early so that when it goes live, you can be there to see what's available, take your pick, check out, and all of that. Please come, see what's available. I would love to have you there to shop the update. So that is coming this Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, I took a little break from the midweek ramble last week because I felt like I needed to recharge my batteries just a little bit and almost like more or less recharge my um, idea batteries, which sounds absolutely ridiculous. I have so many ideas for midweek rambles but I needed to give myself some time to kind of process a few of them, read through the tip line ideas that you guys are submitting, because as you know, the midweek ramble topics come from your submissions. And so I needed to kind of root through that and figure out what I'm going to be doing for you know the month ahead of us. And so it was kind of nice to take a little bit of a break, but taking that break from the midweek ramble also afforded me some time to do something that I had been meaning to do for a little while now. And that is de-stash um, some yarn and some notions and some tools and things that I had that I no longer had use for and that I really needed to let go. And not only did I sell some skeins of yarn, lots of skeins of yarn, um, I also sold my Ashford E ball winder. So if you watch the podcast and the midweek rambles, you know my thoughts about the Ashford E ball winder. I mentioned it a few videos ago and I am 
absolutely grateful to the person who found use for that and purchased it from my D stash. So I had a great D stash. I sold yarn. I sold my e-ball winder and I felt really great about making this future investment or this investment. It's not really future. It's here um, to have, you know, a new kind of adventure ahead of me in terms of, you know, the fiber arts and things like that. So we are going to be talking about that. Um, I'm skirting around it right now just because I want to save it to the end of the episode, but we are going to be talking about that. But that was something that I did over the course of the last week is I de-stashed my yarn. But I also want to give you a quick rundown of my projects. This is a chatty one. And I feel like, um, I feel like I knew going into this episode of the podcast that I just didn't have a ton of like progress to share with you. Um, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do a quick blow by blow of where I'm at right now with my current projects. Now I've been working on these kind of bit by bit over the course of the last week. So not a ton of progress has been made on any one item that I'm going to show you anyway, cause that's, it's fun. Okay. So these are my socks for dad. And, uh, I don't remember where I was last time I showed you, but here we are. We're getting there guys inch by inch. It is coming together. Um, and they're really cool socks. I'm digging them. They're taking me a long time. I mean, like I, I don't, it's, it's because I'm not working on them, you know, as the only thing I'm working on. So it just takes me longer. But I also kind of think too, that that heavier weight of yarn is a little bit more of, um, I don't know. It feels like you're sludging through it a little bit. It's not uncomfortable, um, but it definitely just feels a little bit more heavy. And so working on the stitches on that just kind of doesn't always feel like it flies. It feels like it slows you down just a little bit, but all that being said, I do enjoy it. This is all I have left of each of the balls of, um, well, this is, two, yeah, these, this is each two balls of Patton's Croy because I'm knitting these two at a time. So each of these was a whole ball of Patton's Croy and I have this much left of each ball. That absolutely should be enough to finish my sock. But if it's not, I did purchase an extra ball of each, but yeah, I think I should be fine. So those are my socks for dad coming along, making progress, all good things. I, I don't know when these are going to be done. They're going to be done though, because I need to give them to my dad so he can warm his toesies with some new socks. Okay. The next thing I want to share is my Franken sweater as it show it, <laughs> words will come. Um, this is going to stay the Franken sweater. I'm not going to change the name. Because I can't, because whenever I go to reference this, I'm just calling it my Franken sweater. It just comes naturally to me at this point. So whether or not it maintains that kind of like aura or um, I don't know if the name continues to fit, it doesn't really matter to me because Franken sweater is just the first thing that I think to call it. So that's what it is. If you would like to know more about this sweater and if you're just tuning into the Wool Needles Hands podcast and you don't understand why I'm calling this the Franken sweater, go back and binge watch the last like five episodes of the podcast and you'll follow along the journey of the Franken sweater. And it's quite fun. Um, it's a good one. So you won't, you won't regret it, but there's reasons why I've, I'm calling it the Franken sweater, but it's gone through, um, this guy's gone through some stuff. It's seen some, some business. So here we are. This is where I'm at right now. I finished the, um, the bottom hem is finished. No, it's not. It's not finished. I'm done knitting it. It's knit to the length that it's going to be. And what I'm doing right now is a three needle bind off. So there is no longer a ball or two balls of yarn attached to the sweater. There's only enough yarn attached to the sweater to execute a three needle bind off. And the reason why I have this little ball of it here is because in order to do a three needle bind off, you need to have enough yarn to wrap the circumference of your, the base of your sweater, um, two to three times. And so that's why I have this now. A three needle bind off is going to give you a nice tubular bind off. It's like the tubular cast on of cast offs and it is absolutely not complicated. Um, there's nothing complicated about it. It's actually quite enjoyable. You feel just like you're sewing it. You're sewing like that's what you feel like. You're just hand stitching, which is what you're doing. It's like a sewn bind off. Almost you're kitchenering your stitches together and the steps that you have to follow to do a three needle bind off. Um, is very rhythmic and easy to memorize. So there's absolutely nothing complicated about this, but it takes a long time. Um, I started this, I don't know, I started it not yesterday, but the day before, and I've only been working like three or four inches and then I set it down because it takes a long time. And another reason why it takes me a lot longer is because I'm pairing Surrey with a skein of, um, 
a strand of lion brand fisherman's wool here. So that Surrey, when it comes to um, sticking your uh, tapestry needle into the stitch, oh goodness gracious, hold on. Um, when it comes to executing the sewn bind off, having this like little strand of Surrey here kind of complicates things a little bit because it sticks to absolutely everything. And so, <laughs> Like, I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can do it and give you an example of what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna let this yarn fall to the floor. And it's, and it's not only that, you have this long length of yarn. So when you're stitching, you know, doing like essentially like a Kitchener stitch, you're pulling all of this yarn through the stitches and it's inevitably going to get caught up when you're working with Surrey because that shiz is sticky as all get out. Um, so, yeah, so here we, okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm not trying to show you how this operates. I'm just gonna show you what I mean about pulling the the yarn through. So, you know, it's a little uh, stick the needle, wait, yeah. Uh, stick your tapestry needle into the first needle knitwise and pull it off and pull your yarn through. And then we sit here and we pull through for days and days until you get to the end. And I've done like a third of this so far. When you're just starting out, you have so much yarn to pull through. Skip the next stitch and stick it into the third stitch or the second stitch from the end of the needle, purl wise, and pull the yarn through. Of course, you're not pulling that stitch off. Here we go, days and, and days of yarn. Stick it into the first stitch on the needle, purl wise, and pull it off the needle. I know fiber is getting in my coffee right now, which is gonna be amazing later. Okay, and then stick it up between the two stitches. <laughs> stick it up between the two stitches on the needle. Twist it around and stick it back through the second stitch as if to knit. Don't worry if this is all just flying right over your head right now. This is not intended to be a tutorial. I'm just kind of showing you what this looks like. <laughs> and there, we have done how many did I just bind off? Two stitches? I just bound off two stitches. All of what you just saw, I bound off two stitches. So when you're thinking about binding off your stitches and how quick it is to just bind off, what I just did now was only two stitches worth of bind off. And you're gonna continue to do that for however many stitches I have on my needle right now for the hem of a sweater. So, you know, I'm just taking it slow. I've gotten to the point with with the Franken sweater. We know each other well, we're good friends. We don't need to like rush anything. Um, it's cool to just chill and hang and have the Franken sweater around as an incomplete project for a little while. Cause you know, the weather it's warming up. This sweater is not gonna be very practical in about a week or two. So it's fine, it's cool. I don't need to rush through it and um, I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my tapestry needle through the fabric of my sweater because that's what I've been doing. I don't even, like, what did I even do any of this for? It's just, it's a mess. So you just have to embrace the mess. Story of my life. But that is the Franken sweater. And um, because if, like, if you know about the Franken sweater, you know that I adjusted the length. Um, I shortened it a little bit. And that adjustment has been great. I will try it on after I finish the bind off. So I'll show that on the next episode of the podcast when I actually have some sleeves. Um, but it has been really helpful that l raising it up a little bit and having it not cinch in at the waist or at the hips as much has been really good for the design. It just looks a lot better. So I'm really happy I made that choice. So that's where we are with this. We're in the midst of a three needle bind off. Okay, we're gonna switch positions now and move over here to my next project that I'm gonna share with you today. Now, first things first, um, I am the mother of two children and they are healthy, happy little children and they were healthy, happy little babies. And I know that a heavy woolen blanket with holes in it is not suitable for a baby as a baby blanket um, in terms of like wrapping the child in it or I don't know, any application where the child is directly involved with the blanket in such a way that they might get tangled in the blanket. So we can just get that out of the way. So I know that that is not a good idea now. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there, it was brought up in the comment section of the last video that people were kind of, the alarms were going off, um, that this should not be a baby blanket because it is super thick. 
full of opportunities for little fingers and toes to get caught in here. Um, it's not ideal, like baby blanket material. Yes, I get it. And I appreciate you being concerned. Um, let me clarify the purpose of this baby blanket. When I set out to make this, what, okay, a few things I was thinking about. I needed something that would get worked up pretty quickly. So I needed some heavier yarn. I also wanted something that could lay over the back of a rocking chair because the mother in question is very particular about the decorations and she wants everything to be just so and very um, kind of glamorous. I wanted some, not glamorous, but you know, just really beautiful. I imagine if you've seen um, Father of the Bride Part 2 where the daughter and the mother are both expecting babies and they make that like um, baby room for the mother of the bride, um, her baby, it's just like this amazing, you know, super luxe baby room. Well, that's kind of what this baby room is going for. And so I wanted some kind of like accoutrement to the, the baby room that would be luxe. Um, that could be not necessarily for the baby, but for the mother, but it's part of the baby room. Anyway, it was going to be a gift for an expecting mother. And when I'm knitting a blanket for an expectant mother, the phrase baby blanket just comes out. Okay. So this is not a swaddle blanket <laughs> and it's not even a crib blanket because I wouldn't expect this to be something that somebody would want to put a baby in in a crib. It's heavy and hot and all of that. What this is going to be, if I had to really give you an, uh, a name for this, is I guess I would call this like a nursing lap blanket because I was visualizing her nursing or feeding the baby, however she plans on doing that, on a rocking chair and having this maybe laid over her lap, baby on top of it, something keeping her cozy while she's doing this thing in the middle of the night when she probably would far rather be getting some sleep. Just something comforting for the mother. Listen, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. Um, but that's that was my plan for this really cozy warm blanket is I wanted something really cozy and warm to, you know, decorate this baby room and add a little bit of an extra softness, a soft touch, a cozy kind of hug um, via a, you know, a hand knit blanket. So that was my intention, but here it is. This is what I have so far of my cozy blanket for mummy, um, lap nursing blanket, whatever you wanna call this. Um, this is what I have so far and I absolutely love this. And so it's going to look just beautiful over a rocking chair in the uh, baby room or really anywhere she wants to put it. But the colors are intended to go with, you know, her baby room decor. But yeah, it is so nice. I actually really love this yarn. This is by Loops and Threads. It's a brand that Michaels sells and it is 80% acrylic and 20% alpaca. And that's a really nice blend for something that's going to be in your home that you really need to have some washability there. Um, I, I just really like it. It looks really nice too. You can see those alpaca fibers shining through there, giving it a really nice halo. It's a really beautiful yarn and the available color options are nice as well. Making good progress on that. Does this candle in the corner make you nervous? I know that some people think that I'm very cavalier with my candle and all of the things surrounding the candle. I'm just keeping you on your toes. See if you're paying attention, but don't worry. It looks in the camera much more crowded than it actually is over here, so it's okay. Okay, let's move on to the next thing I wanted to share with you guys and that is um, Lanita the lens room. I'm going to let Lanita take center stage because I want to talk to you a little bit about it, but I want to also show you um, a little closer up than what you're seeing here and just dive into that for just a little bit. So hold on. Okay. I'm thinking I can put Lanita here. So, ah, whoops. Yeah. I don't know how this is going to work. All right. There's Lanita. So I don't know if you noticed, but Lanita is a spinning wheel. She is a Lendrum double treadle spinning wheel. Is my face even about? Yeah, okay. Um, she's beautiful. And I want to turn her this way because I feel like this is the proper way to look at it from like an outsider's perspective, you know, like the person on that side of the spinning wheel. Um, but here she is. There are going to be videos coming where I show you Lanita in more detail, but this is what we're going to work with right now. So Lanita is a Lendrum double treadle, like I mentioned. She is, um, I believe this is called scotch tension. If you have a string that is used to tension the bobbin. Okay, so there's so many like vocabulary terms 
that come, you know, spinning and spinning wheels and all of this. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, in front of you is this gorgeous Lendrum spinning wheel. Behind the said Lendrum spinning wheel is an absolute amateur who knows very little about what she's doing, but she is so ready to learn. So I am going to talk to you about things that I know very little about. So you just have to know that going forward. Um, I'm an, I'm a newbie completely and I'm excited about it. Uh, but anyway, so this is, this is the new spinning wheel. I, I don't really know what benefit it is to have it sitting here, but this is it. Here she is. I'm going to set her back over here. Excuse me. Okay. There you go. Lenita there. Okay. So I have been wanting a spinning wheel for a long time. But I just couldn't justify making that purchase. For whatever reason, it just never felt... For whatever reason, it just never felt right. It was never the right time. Well, I've been watching a lot of Tashiana over on Stitches and Starlight. She goes by Tashi. And she did a whole series on of, for Vlogmas talking about spinning. And that's kind of like a big part of her channel and her podcast. I mean, she has a, it's a knitting slash spinning podcast if I had to categorize it. It's fantastic. But her Vlogmas was a lot of spinning related content that was so fun, enjoyable, and enlightening to watch. That as I was listening to her talk about all of this and just like her approach to the craft, which was very um, grounded, she never like dumbed down what she was talking about, but she was definitely coming at it from a place of, I don't really know how to explain it. There's nothing pretentious about the way she was describing anything. She was just, it was just very down to earth. I don't know. It was really like I could listen to her and not know anything about the things she was saying, but for whatever reason, it felt approachable to me. And then I started learning about what she was talking about and feeling compelled to Google some things to do some additional research. And everything was just it was just a really pleasant learning experience and she's fabulous at talking about these things and she's very knowledgeable. And I think she's only been spinning for a couple of years, which is really motivating for me because, you know, I'm just starting out and to see her spinning as proficiently as she is after only a couple of years, just it, it's motivating. It makes you feel like, okay, this is something that though it's difficult to learn, um, I can do it. And I don't know the last time I took on something like a tactile craft like this that felt so foreign since knitting. I really can't think of anything. Crochet maybe, but not really because it's, you know, I feel like there's similar things going on with your hands, but this is so absolutely foreign to me. So anyway, I, um, I talked to Tashi. I actually kind of picked her brain a little bit about, um, we connected, you know, we connected in some, I can't exactly remember. I think I might've like commented on like how much I love her videos and thanking her for her content. And then we just kind of connected and I told her that I was really interested in getting into spinning. And so she started making some recommendations and she was asking me like what spinning wheel I was thinking about getting. And, and I, I don't know, like I didn't know, um, I know the brands and it's funny because I kind of leapt to the Ashford Kiwi three, um, which Ashford was the brand of the e-ball winder that I had just recently sold. And so I was like, okay, Ashford, they do spinning wheels. And I had had a catalog here that came in the box with the ball winder. So I was looking through there and I know that a lot of people are using Ashford's. And so that was just kind of my initial thought. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just look at Ashford's and they're really great spinning wheels. And I was going to settle on the Kiwi three. So I mentioned it to Tashi, letting her know that that was where I was kind of leaning. And she suggested, um, she said, that's a great wheel. She's like, but let me suggest this other one. And she suggested the Lendrum double treadle. And she gave me some reasons why. Um, and she uses a Lendrum as well. And so I did some additional research about the Lendrum um, since she sent me down that like path. And I learned a lot about, you know, kind of the opinions that people have about the Lendrum, why they feel this way. I watched some people, you know, spin for the first time on a Lendrum, like experienced as spinners spinning for the first time on a Lendrum, all of these various different things. And I realized like, she's absolutely right. This is just, this is the right way to go for me. And so I found a Lendrum double treadle at the Woolery. So I purchased this at the Woolery. You can also get it at Paradise Fibers. I did not purchase the complete kit, the like $900 kit because it was out of my budget at the moment. Um, so I just purchased the wheel because that was what I had budgeted for. That was what my D stash allowed me to do. Um, and I didn't want to go outside the limits of that budget that I had set. So that was where I went. So this is a Lendrum double treadle that I purchased from the Woolery. And I'm so excited. 
it arrived yesterday. I had been teasing about it coming on Instagram for a few days and it finally arrived. I did an unboxing, um, which you know, I'll, I'll put a clip in of the unboxing kind of situation uh, that I posted on Instagram yesterday. So you can check that out right here. Now, prior to getting this, I was watching a lot of videos, um, Tashi's videos, of course, but also her videos are not necessarily like, um, like how to videos per se. They're more just like why and what and discussions of spinning in general. And then of course she drops some like really golden tips in there as well. So you can learn so much from her, but I needed to watch some videos that were a little bit more like how to get started spinning. And that led me to a few different folks on YouTube. And I, as I get more into this, I will be ready to share more sources of information with you. I'll link to a few um, down below, but again, I'm very much scratching the surface. I have some books that I purchased. I've been watching some videos, but everything is very like superficial. But one of the people that I've been watching is um, Jillian Eve. So she has a channel here on YouTube where she talks all about spinning. And she goes like deep dives, right? Like, so her videos aren't just geared for the beginner, they're geared for the spinner. Um, but she does have a series of videos for beginners. And so I started watching her videos. Now, when you're getting into a craft for the first time, but you don't necessarily have the thing you need to do the craft and you're kind of getting that, like you're front loading yourself with information, imagining yourself doing the craft, watching somebody do it proficiently and putting yourself in that person's position and thinking to yourself like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Look at that. It doesn't look that hard. She's just doing a bunch of this and there's yarn and, and it's going to be fine. Um, I don't know if that is you, but that is me. And it, I watch things and I assume it's going to be as easy as it looks. And that is a mistake, my friends. But I don't know. I, I always just think, okay, like I can do this. And that's good because it gives you the confidence boost to get started. <laughs> but then when it's time to sit you know, behind your spinning wheel and actually make yarn from a f sheep's wool that comes in the form of like this. This is a bat of wool and I'll talk more about this in a minute, but essentially let's just think like cotton candy, okay? Like trying to turn yarn into yarn from what is essentially cotton candy. You realize that you have loosed into your world a whole new set of challenges that you are most likely mentally unprepared to handle the way that you thought you were prepared to handle them, if that makes any sense. You just realize immediately like this is not going to be easy. <laughs> and that was like my rude awakening. So funny story, I was watching Jillian Eve and she had this, so she has really good videos and the, her cadence and the way that she talks, she has like um, a very sweet persona when she's referring to like beginning something, like when she's doing her beginning spinning videos, she kind of speaks, I don't want to say down to you, but she really, you know, she's bringing it down for you because she knows like this is your first time. So she has this video where she's talking about like, we're going to get into spinning. You just got your first spinning wheel. How excited are you? Let's get you spinning. And she starts talking about this. And I'm thinking like, as I'm watching this, like, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. And so she gets to the part where she's sitting in front of her spinning wheel and she's pointing out some different things. And I'm like, okay, we got a bobbin, we got a maiden of the thing and we've got the wheel and we've got like the, the mother of the, the, all of the stuff or whatever, you know, all these different things. And I know what those things are called now, but at the time that was like all that was going through my head is all these jargon that sound like they come straight out of like uh, the medieval source book, okay? And she starts saying like, okay, now before we get into spinning fiber, you're not ready for that. So we're gonna practice with just a really long piece of scrap yarn. Now, 
really confident, I know what I'm doing, you know, hand it over me is like, we like, no, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. Let's just get like right into the fiber. I just want to see how this works. And so she does this thing with the yarn where she attaches like a piece of yarn, which you actually have to do anyway, because you need something to lead the fiber onto the, the bobbin. Um, but she attaches this yarn, a really long length of yarn that we're going to, you know, practice spinning. And all of this is before I actually have a wheel. So I'm just watching with like my tea or my coffee and I'm just like, okay, uh-huh, let's see it. And she says this thing about like, you're not ready for fiber yet. So we're going to practice the yarn. And I'm very much like, girl, I'm ready. So I watch her and it was enlightening. And I know, like, okay, I'm different. Like the wheel's going to come. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to jump right into that fiber. No big deal. The wheel comes yesterday and here I am putting the wheel together in my office and carrying it out after I'm done putting it together. I'm carting it out to the living room with this fiber and actually this yarn as well. It's just some, some woolly yarn that I had because I knew I needed something to start it off. And I'm like, okay, we're going to get into some fiber spinning. I set my wheel down. I'm in front of the wheel. I'm doing some things that I see on how to get it all prep pre prepared to like draw the fiber in and I'm ready to spin. And you guys, if you need an example, what happened to me yesterday when I was doing this is the perfect example of why you need to calm down and follow directions. Listen to the expert because she knows what she's talking about. I started trying to spin fiber and I failed miserably for a couple of reasons. The first reason I had my drive band affixed to the smallest whirl when it needed to be affixed to the largest whirl, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. And it was moving so fast and sucking the yarn. And it was, all the, it was crazy, but I was trying to spin fiber. And my husband actually said to me, like, maybe you should just do this with like some yarn, you know, like instead of trying to get that fiber going, just try to get used to like working the treadle before actually working with fiber. And the daggers that shot out of my eyes <laughs> when he said that, knowing full well he was 100% correct, I would have loved to have seen that like captured because I was having this moment of complete, like I was being broken by this spinning wheel and by, you know, the spirit of Jillian Eve, who's you know, very, still very much alive. Just, you know, the thought of her looking down on me being like, I told you so. You're not ready for fiber yet, Taylor. You need a pair, a piece of yarn. You just need to practice with some yarn. You're not ready yet. I was not ready yet. Absolutely not ready yet. So this, all of this is just, just to say that I am so new to this whole spinning adventure. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. So for the record, if we ever decide for posterity's sake to come back to this episode six months down the road, when I've had some experience, here we are, you know, February 12th, I know nothing about spinning. I know nothing um, other than just some like little bits and bobs I've accumulated in my mind over the last like week or so watching some videos. Actually spinning, I don't, I don't know anything. I did purchase a couple of good books about fleece and fiber a while ago when I got into dyeing yarn that I know is gonna help kind of serve me in this process as well. So yeah, I don't know, I'm really excited about it, you guys. I'd love to know what you think. I know that this video was very conversational, lots of talk but I hope it provided you with an opportunity to just sit down, relax, and hear about something new that's coming to the world of Wool Needle's hands. So anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me today and to chat about all of these things. It is so nice to be able to sit here with you and do this. I've missed you over the course of the last week. Um, I am excited to pick the midweek ramble back up on Wednesday. I do have a fun one for you guys for Wednesday. If you took any value or enjoyed yourself during this video at all, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe if you would like to see more content and click the bell icon so that you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. So until we meet again on Wednesday for the midweek ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy spinning, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.